Hey everybody, welcome back to the Joe Rockstar channel and part three of the Climbs and Descent series. Now I know I said we were gonna go over climbs in this installment of the series, but it seems we need to clear up a few things from the last video. In part two, I said, if you're sitting, you're wrong. While I believe 100% that standing is the best position to be in when you're going downhill, it's not always practical when you're going uphill. I should say that you should always strive to be in the standing attack position in most situations, but sitting is sometimes unavoidable, and in turns, it can be beneficial. I also want to address some caveats to my philosophy of dropping to a lower gear in order to use engine braking to control the downhill speed while dragging the front brake slightly and using minimal to zero rear brake. Now this philosophy works well for me because I re-geared my 500 EXC with a 13 tooth sprocket in the front and a 50 tooth sprocket in the rear. This makes my lower gear shorter. And when I say my gear is shorter, I mean that it's necessary during normal riding conditions to shift up to the next gear sooner than before I did the sprocket change. This means that the bike will not go very fast in lower gears. In many cases, I hardly ever use first gear anymore. Now the benefit is an increased torque in the lower gears. And this is really handy for quick bursts of acceleration when approaching obstacles, but the drawback is that it reduces my top speed. With that being said, if you have tall gears, which is the opposite of short gears obviously, you may not get as much engine braking to assist in slowing you down as I do. In addition, if you are riding a two-stroke, engine braking is almost useless compared to a four-stroke. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about conquering one of my favorite off-road obstacles, hill climbs. First, I want to point out that not all hills are the same. There are so many factors that can make a hill climb difficult. And it's not necessarily all related to the steepness of the incline. Even on a relatively gentle incline, large rocks, ruts, roots, mud, or other factors can increase the difficulty factor exponentially. Now I'm no scientist, but I think the formula to calculate this difficulty curve is difficulty equals slope of the incline multiplied by the number of rocks, ruts, and ledges squared divided by the depth of mud or other slick surfaces plus your fear factor. Or a less difficult solution is that the difficulty level is proportional to the amount of time you spend looking at the hill and overthinking it. Your mindset will defeat you long before the hill even has a chance to. Confidence can carry you a long way. Now I found that hills that used to scare me the most stopped scaring me when I stopped thinking about it and just rode. The second my attention starts to focus on how scary or difficult the hill I'm climbing is, I start to lose momentum, and nothing good comes of that, especially on a hard climb. In fact, after body positioning, which we explored in part two, I think momentum is the biggest key to hill climbs. Momentum is a delicate thing that must be balanced. Too much momentum and the slightest kick from a rock or cross rut and you could lose control. Not enough momentum and your balance is threatened. You end up going too slow and you could lose control as well. And no momentum, well, you're gonna get stuck and have to turn around and start over, which is not always a fun thing on a big bike at a steep hill. The key to balancing momentum is in the art of clutch and throttle control. And if you were hoping I was gonna say something easier to master, well, I'm sorry, but that's not how dirt bike physics work. So, how do you develop good clutch and throttle control? Well, that's simple. You practice. You need to get a lot of seat time. No, not that kind of seat time. You need to ride a lot. I approach a hill on second or third gear usually. Whatever's comfortable and doesn't have the bike screaming to go up a gear like it's gonna explode or grunting on the edge of a stall when it needs to be downshifted. As the incline increases, so does my throttle. 
and if my speed gets too high, I can back off a little by slipping a little clutch in to control my speed. But keep this in mind, once you give up momentum, it can be very difficult to get it back. And with that in mind, I only slow down when obstacles are making it impossible to hold my line. Usually, a little pull on the clutch lever and a slow release is enough to slow to a controllable speed and keep up the momentum. I always use a little more throttle on the climb than usual, and I keep the revs up. I use the clutch action to control speed and traction. Too much throttle and not enough clutch is going to break traction or cause a loop out. Not enough throttle and not enough clutch and you're going to stall. Too much clutch, not enough throttle ends up with a huge momentum loss that causes the bike to get too slow and hard to control. With too much clutch and too much throttle and the bike just makes a lot of noise and goes nowhere. I prefer to be closer to the too much throttle and a light slip of the clutch. Controlling the clutch becomes crucial to preventing rear wheel spin and a loss of traction. And so this becomes an exercise in coordination between the forefinger of your left hand on the clutch and your right wrist on the throttle, working in perfect unison to find the perfect combination of throttle and clutch for the moment. And it's constantly changing. It is definitely not a set it and forget it kind of thing. Now I suppose we can't forget about keeping our eyes ahead and always scanning for the best line to avoid obstacles. Never looking down, but always ahead. And last but not least, you gotta remember to breathe. And all of this is important. I hate to say one thing is more important than the other. It is all important. And I could go on for hours about it until I'm blue in the face. If you were like I was when I first started and you scour the internet for tips and pester other more experienced riders for the secrets of their success, you'll probably get plenty of answers. But to really understand, you must feel it. To know what it is supposed to feel like though, you're gonna have to put in the time on the bike, working on the fundamentals and fighting off the bad habits. And when you finally get it and it clicks, you're gonna know. And you will be rewarded for all of your effort. Well, I think that just about covers it. And thanks for watching. Now get out there and practice and come back and tell us how it's going for you. Let me know your thoughts and philosophies on climbs in the comment section below. And don't forget to share and smash that like button. If you like this video, you might enjoy some of my other videos, so go check them out. Now, if you're seeing my videos for the first time and like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. Well, that's all for now, guys. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.